Imagine yourself suddenly forced into homelessness and reduced to sleeping with a stone as a pillow. In Parashat Vayetze, we find Jacob in this exact situation. Nevertheless, we hear him express words of joyful amazement. Listen to what Jacob exclaims with, with deep awe. Surely, the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. What happened? And how did Jacob get here? Well, Jacob is on his way to Haran, fleeing from his brother Esau, whom he has angered terribly. Even though Jacob stole the blessing of the firstborn, all he has now in his hand is a staff. Sin and misery are, are two, two different things. Not all misery is a direct result of, of sin. But crooked behavior often results in misery. And such a stew of misery, salty with sin, is what, what is left to deceitful Jacob, far from home and family. Before Jacob departed on his journey, the father he had deceived still said goodbye. More than that, Isaac spoke words of blessing to his younger son. May God Almighty give you the blessing of Abraham. True. Isaac said it, but will God really give Jacob this blessing? Amazingly, he does. The God of Abraham looks after Jacob in a special way. In a dream, Jacob sees heaven opened. Angels ascend and descend a stairway that reaches heaven. And God now personally confirms to Jacob the blessing previously given to Abraham and Isaac with an added special promise of protection. Now there's something truly amazing that can be found here. Many translations translate verse 13, and behold, the Lord stood above it, indicating God stands above the stairway. But, but a better understanding is likely, and behold, the Lord stood above him, by him. God is standing next to Jacob. Because Hashem is not at the top of the stairway, but at the bottom of it. He is standing protectively next to his child. Because that's what truly happens in, in a house of God on earth. Then God comes to dwell with us. Just as we find later in the tabernacle and the temple. This marvel of, of God descending looking after undeserving people. That's at the heart of the Tanakh. God himself stepping in, stepping down to us when we hit rock bottom. But as we talk about this, there, there's still one other important detail that deserves our attention towards the end of this Parsha. Then Jacob tells that he has had another dream. In this dream, the angel of the Lord appeared to him. The angel of the Lord, that, that's not just a regular angel. Because listen to, to how he identifies himself. He says, I am the God of Bethel. So he, the angel of the Lord, is the same as the Lord who comes down and confirms his promises. In our next parsha, we'll meet this angel of the Lord, who is the Lord himself, again. Then at a place which gets the name Peniel, face of God. We will zoom in on that next week. But for now, let's fast forward about 1500 years and let's move from Bethel to, to the Galilee. Because here we meet him again, this same ultimate delegate of God, the angel of the Lord, the God of Bethel. He has come now in human flesh as the son of man, Jesus the Messiah. An Israelite has just confessed him to be the king of Israel. And now listen to his response. Truly, truly I say, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Think of it. Angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man, Jesus the Messiah. This takes us back to when God stood next to an undeserving Jacob confirming his promises and offering his protection. 
the message is clear. He, Israel's Messiah, is the very presence of God with his people. And God's presence, that's what gives us ultimate shalom. Jacob's dream becomes full reality when we meet Jesus the Messiah. Such is the God of Jacob and such a God he wants to be for all of us. You're welcome to, to contact us and, and use the chat option to talk more with us about this. We wish you God's perfect shalom.